To start with, let's go over the limitations of Lineworks and get familiarized with the UI. The Lineworks tab is in the end panel. So here we have a few options before actually starting Lineworks. The first is to create a GP taper curve. This is the grease pencil taper curve. This taper curve is the default taper that any grease pencil line will have once created. And next we have a material slot. This uh, whatever material is set here will be assigned to all the mesh strips. This just saves time in assigning the material to all of our objects. And the last option is to hide all other objects. So any object that is not selected will be hidden when we go into Lineworks. If I add some cubes here, you'll see once I hit start Lineworks that they will disappear. But you'll also see something happen to our Suzanne monkey. It seems like half of Suzanne has disappeared and the subsurface is gone. The reason this happened is that Lineworks cannot use any geometry created from modifiers, it can only use the base geometry that you see when in edit mode. So our Suzanne is using a mirror modifier and a subsurf modifier. Since half of Suzanne is created with a mirror modifier, we will be forced to apply that mirror modifier or forego adding lines to that half of the model. We will be fine with keeping the subsurf modifier as it is because we don't need that extra geometry and it won't get in the way of anything. Now with the mirror modifier applied, we can see that the entire Suzanne model is there and we can now place lines on both sides of the character. Other modifiers to be aware of are ones that are destructive, such as the mask modifier and the decimate modifier, especially the mask modifier because there is a bug currently in Blender where if too much of the character is masked, it can affect line works and make it not work. So be wary of using the mask modifier for your character with line works. Let's switch over to an actual character file for the UI overview instead of just the Suzanne model. This file is from the Spring OpenMovie project from the Blender Cloud. And the way this file is set up, the character is not local geometry to the file. It's actually a link collection from another file. Lineworks will only work with mesh objects and nothing else, no curves, meta balls, nerves, or anything like that, only mesh objects. But it does work with linked collections and linked mesh objects. So even though this is a link collection, we can still add lines to our character. Now we are in our Lineworks modal operator. Let's start with a overview of the UI. On the left side, we have our properties panel. And at the top, we have our default line type selection. There are four line types that we will get into in a later video. But here you select which is the default one that any newly created line will be. Next, we have a few options for placing our lines. The first one is auto root points. In the next video, I will get into what roots are, but for now, this is on by default because it saves time. And the last option is our scene scale. For this, the smaller your character is, the smaller the scene scale should be, and the bigger the character is, the bigger the scene scale. It also factors into the point surface separation distance as well as the size of the roots. And the last thing in the properties panel is our key map. Here you will be able to see all the available keys to press and what they will do. If you no longer want to see the key map, you can just click it to collapse it. 
Now to the right side where we have our export setting. At the top we have the export lines button. This button will end the modal and create all of the lines we have set into actual objects and the actual rig. The next option is our GP line thickness. This is just the line thickness for all of the grease pencil objects or the grease pencil strokes that will be made. So if you know you're going to need a thicker line, you can increase the thickness or a thinner, you can decrease it. Then we have a variety of viewport display options. You can toggle the display of the point normals, the roots, and the anchor points. This will help you to clear up clutter when you have too many things on the screen. Then we have an option for depth culling. Now if I rotate around the object and go behind the character's head, you can see that the line that before was visible can no longer be seen. That's because the depth culling is preventing it from being drawn. And if we turn it off, now we can see through the character and see the lines and roots at all time. This will be especially helpful if you're trying to select something and cannot. You will then be able to turn off depth culling and selection will work perfectly. Then we have the toggle wireframe overlay. This will do just as it says. It toggles the wireframe overlay, allowing you to see the geometry more clearly so you can use the topology as a guide for adding your lines. Next, we have the line brightness, which will change the brightness of the lines and the roots that are being drawn. This way you can increase or decrease the brightness to make it clearer to read against the color of your character. And the last option is the UI scale. This will allow you to scale up and down the UI in case you need to make it bigger in order to read the text better. The UI works pretty much how you would expect it to. With the number properties, you can either click the arrows or shift click them to increase the value change. Or you can click and drag in the middle of the bar to scrub through the values. That is the overview of Lineworks UI. Now in the next video, we'll get to actually creating lines on our characters.